The Greek hero Achilles is challenged to a race by an unassuming tortoise, who claims that he can beat Achilles as long as he is given a head start. Achilles accepts the challenge, knowing that no man could beat him in a race, let alone a slow-moving tortoise. The tortoise is given a head start. The race begins and Achilles bursts forward, making up ground on the slow-moving tortoise. However, by the time that Achilles has made it to the tortoise's starting point, the tortoise has moved forward by one meter. By the time Achilles makes up the ground on the new gap, the tortoise has moved again, creating a new but smaller gap. Every time that Achilles reaches the point where the tortoise was, a new smaller gap has formed as the tortoise continues to plod forward, and so always remains slightly ahead of Achilles. This paradox was created by the ancient Greek philosopher Zeno, who lived 2,500 years ago. The paradox supports the idea that motion is impossible, as to get from point A to point B, one has to travel an infinite amount of steps. Before I reach my destination, I must first travel to its halfway point. But before I can get to the halfway point, I must first travel to its halfway point, and so on and so on. If one has to travel an infinite amount of distances, then the destination is never reached. But clearly, motion is possible, and we know that Achilles would quickly overtake the tortoise. Many solutions to Zeno's paradox have been offered. The standard solution argues that Zeno was wrong to assume that the sum of the distances which Achilles has to run is infinite. The path which Achilles runs is a linear continuum, so is composed of an actual infinity of points, or a transfinite set of points. However, the sum of these distances is a finite distance, as the series converges. Although you can split up 10 meters into an actual infinity of points, the sum of that infinity will be 10 meters. In contrast, a potential infinity gets bigger over time, and so would be divergent. So, Achilles wins the race, and motion is possible after all. Thanks for watching. I would love to hear what you think about Zeno's paradox down in the comments. Does the standard solution solve the paradox, or are there other solutions which you think work better? If you've ever wondered that we might be living inside a simulation, then I think you'd enjoy my previous video on the simulation argument. Check it out by clicking here. And if you enjoyed this video, then please consider subscribing by clicking here. See you next time.